Welcome back, Questions Business. The three major top US airlines have now all said that they are removing change fees for passengers <clears throat> and doing so permanently. They're trying to woo back passengers, obviously, as numbers and remain low, very low capacity. The top three carriers in uh, the United States, their stock, well, two of them are down. United and uh, Delta are down. American is eking up, but they were all down because, obviously, lose, uh, getting rid of change fees in the longer run will have a negative impact on revenue. They were bringing in up to half a billion a year for some of the airlines. Air France KLM is cementing its plan to raise funds. It's redeemed a $400 million in notes, phasing out the larger jets. Peter Elbers is the CEO of KLM. He joins me now from Amsterdam. Uh, Peter, good to see you, sir. Firstly, are you now satisfied? You and, uh, and Air France, do you now believe you have sufficient funding and financing in place to see you through into the new year and beyond. Yeah, we recently, hi Richard, good evening. We recently got some, uh, some uh, loans and some support uh, and bank guarantees which should help us uh, to face the present situation and help us to get through to next year and then hopefully we'll see a further improvement of the business environment. Um, this, this business environment, I, I mean, we see resurgences and then fallbacks. Uh, Joseph Varady, who you'll be well familiar with from Wiz on this program last night, described it as a roller coaster. I assume you are riding those same waves as countries open and close, restrict and then reopen again. Yeah, we, we basically see countries are opening, are closing, and, and I think one of the biggest challenges for, for airlines in general and, and for us uh, operating to all these different countries in particular is that we see a wide range of different rules, regulation, uh, specifications which differ country by country when it comes to travel restrictions. So, indeed, we saw some trend, the positive direction uh, in, the, in the past couple of weeks, in, the, in more recently, the last two to three weeks, especially in the European landscape, we see more restrictions coming in, especially, for example, in the UK, now imposing new quarantine measures. Can you understand passengers' frustration bordering on anger when airlines suddenly announce that fees that they said were so crucial, i.e. change fees, suddenly not only disappear, but disappear for good, forever? permanently, which begs the question, well, if you can do it now, why didn't you do it then? Well, I, I guess everyone looking at the industry um, uh, will see that, that the situation we're facing today is, is such an unprecedented uh, crisis which lasts way longer than any of the previous disruptions we had, which needs the industry to adjust to a new situation in, in reality. And, and I guess every country and every continent really is making up its own sort of new passenger regulations and, and decisions to, to be taken. So I understand it from a customer's perspective that it may be confusing that things which were there are now different. but. We're facing all together a such a different new reality where airlines need to adjust and to face and to make sure, because that's why it's being abandoned, to make sure that customers are willing again to board the aircraft and sort of take, take these new rules into consideration in making their trips. Peter, the, the question of business travel, leisure's going to fall off to a large extent after the summer. How worried are you you don't have the business travel to fall back on into the autumn? It will be even worse. Well, business, business travel, especially for the intercontinental travel, intercontinental travel, is obviously a very crucial part. I think what, it, what is a little bit encouraging to see is that a lot of businesses basically want to get back into inter, intercontinental travel, is that they really hope that we find a way all together to deal with this situation in order to make sure that business can go on. And, and after all these this months, really, of stopping meeting people, stopping going into, into, into larger gatherings, people looking forward for a way to get through this. Peter, I want to end on a 
literally, literally a high note, uh, the V-plane, where the, uh, the model version, the drone version, has now flown. This is literally a plane in a V-shape, as the pictures will show. You're sponsoring and you're working closely with the university behind it. So, having seen it now fly, will it be ever become a reality? Do you see this as something that's going to happen? Well, for us, for us, the the topic around sustainability is incredibly important, and and for the last uh, decade, even more, we we are ranking high in the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And with that in mind, we announced last year our campaign, Fly Responsibly, in order to make the next move in sustainability. Two things were extremely important in that. One was innovation, and the other one was collaboration. So at that point in time, and I recall you and I spoke on that during the IATA meeting in Seoul last year, when the world was still very, very different, uh, and the fact that today it really we we could release the video where the where this this model of three meters by three meters was actually making a flight is really encouraging for the future of the aviation industry. So looking a bit through this crisis, I think we need sometimes these little moments of encouragement that innovation and collaboration still lead to wonderful new steps in the industry. I'm still hoping we can meet in November uh, at IATA's annual general meeting. Peter Herbert, who is joining, who joins me from uh, Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. Peter, as always, good to see you. Thank you, sir. Now.